Hi there, Homespun friends. It is Sherry, and it's wonderful to see you today. I wanted to come along and do a video where we talk a little bit about um, our fellow YouTuber and dear friend, Andrea Mills, who passed away this week. And today is her service um, where she is going to be laid to rest. And I just felt impressed to uh, share a video with you about the situation because several of you have been reaching out to me through Facebook messages and um, through email uh, saying how sad you are to hear about Andrea's passing. Now, for those of you who maybe watch my channel and don't know Andrea Mills, those are probably very few people because Andrea is as well known on YouTube. She has thousands of subscribers. Uh, she shared her large family life with us for many years. She was a teacher of so many good things, how to organize, how to uh, live uh, a simple life, how to homeschool, um, you know, how to raise a large family, how to make a lot of your own clothing, how to make your own medicines. She just had a wonderful capacity to use every moment to teach us and help us. I got to know Andrea a little bit better in 2017 when I reached out to her and I wanted to send her a gift. I wanted to send her one of my hair clips that, that you know that I sell through Little Rose. And and so we talked back and forth for a little while during that period of time. And uh, Andrea is just as sweet to talk to her one-on-one -on -one as it is to listen to her in her videos. Um, she was a very gracious person and, and kind. And it's just a struggle for us as human beings to understand how someone 41 years old, a wife and mother to nine children, could pass at such an early age. It's very, very tough. And, um, you know, I think it was sometime in the first of August that Andrea was beginning to experience some abdominal pain. She knew she was pregnant with her 10th child, but she hadn't shared that with any of us yet. Um, and she, you know, was going to the doctor. I think she went a couple of times to say, you know, my stomach's hurting. I'm having this pain. And, um, and they really couldn't figure out what was going on. And it was sometime around... Uh, weekend before last when she went to the doctor and they figured out that, that it was her gallbladder that was giving her trouble. And so Sunday a week ago, Andrea went into the hospital to have that gallbladder removed. And when they opened her up and removed it, they were they noticed that something was wrong. They noticed that her liver didn't look good. The gallbladder certainly didn't look good. And as they began to run tests, they began to uh, find um, what was cancer. And uh, cancer in both her liver and the gallbladder, but you know cancer does not originate in either one of those places. So they began to try to find where it was. Where was this cancer coming from? And they flew her to Denver and she saw specialists there. Um, you know, this is just a matter of hours and days that we're talking about uh, transpiring as they're trying to figure out what they can do to help Andrea. And it was sometime last weekend when she lost her baby and she delivered her little baby boy I believe his name was Cyrus Grant, and uh, and she was very sad, as was Tom and all the family and friends, um, that she had lost her baby. And then uh, it wasn't but just a couple of days later that Andrea passed away, and um, she was surrounded by her family and her children and, and many people who loved her. And it was just a shock to see that from the time that they removed Andrea's gallbladder until the day she died was only eight days. And, um, and that's very sad. It can be good if you think, well, she didn't have to suffer for a really long period of time. But then um, it's, it's just shocking because no one could see, see that this was coming. Andrea had been busy all summer with her family, taking a road trip with them for a little homeschooling thing they do. And, um, and it was just, it was just shocking. And so we're trying to come to terms with this. And what are some things that, that we can think about when we look at our lives and we realize that bad things happen to good people and grief comes to us all? Well, I think the first thing that we need to remember is that death is a part of life. Death is a part of life. And, uh, and so as we, as we recognize that our life is temporary and it's coming to all of us, friends. Death is coming to all of us because life is temporary. Um, 
I remember one time when my husband was very young in the pastorate and a younger man in our community had passed away and he was talking to one of our older members and he was saying, I can't believe that this young man has passed away and he was such a great person and he was never sick and he was just, you know, he was so young and in the, and just in the bud of his life and, you know, it's hard to imagine that he's gone. And uh, this older gentleman reached over and took my husband by the arm and he said, son, you don't have to be old to die. You don't have to be sick to die. You just have to be alive to die. And that was a sobering moment because it seemed so simple. And yet we ourselves were probably in our late 20s. Um, we were thinking that, you know, oh, we have all these years to live because we're young. But friends, we never know when our lives will be required. You know, God has a purpose and a plan for each one of us. And when our work for him is done, he will call us home. And so Andrea's work was done. Now, in our eyes, it doesn't seem possible that her work was done. She still had a family to raise. She still had a channel to run. She still had lots of things to do and to teach us. But according to God's plan, she was finished with what he had for her to do. And so we have to accept that death is a part of life. Secondly, we have to realize that grief is good. Many times we think grief is not good. We cry and we sob, and certainly I have done that for several days. I cried until my eyes were almost closed because just the sadness that was in my heart. Um, but friends, I'm just here to tell you that grief means that we have loved deeply, that we have cared, that we have compassion in our souls. And grief is good. Let those feelings out. Don't waller in them and hang around in them and let them consume you. But admit that you're sad. Admit that you have questions because God is big enough to handle those questions. And grief is good. Also, number three, remember that God loves you and he cares. God loves you and he cares. A lot of times when bad things happen to us, we think, well, God has just turned his back on me. He doesn't care about me. This terrible tragedy has come my way and I'm all alone. You know, that is not true, friends. God is good and he loves us and he cares about us. I remember one of the very first scriptures that, um, I ever memorized in the Bible is one that I bet you did too because it's the shortest verse in the Bible and it says what? Jesus wept. And what was Jesus weeping over? Jesus was weeping over his friend Lazarus who died. He was a human being and he had grief. If Jesus cried, then we know that we're going to cry. And God cares for us. He cares that we're sad. He understands that as human beings on this earth, that we're going to suffer. And he has promised us that he will never leave us and never forsake us. So remember that God cares. So we have to remember that death is a part of life. Grief is good. God loves you and cares for you. And lastly, we have to remember that we should not waste our suffering. Don't waste your suffering. What is the difference between a person who is not a believer who suffers and a believer who suffers. Well, a believer who suffers knows that God has a good plan in mind when he allows hard times to come our way. I'm reminded of this scripture and it's familiar to you all and I'm going to read it to you out of my New Living Translation Bible here out of Romans 8 28. And it says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Now friends, each one of us is called, right? Each one of his children is called to a purpose. And the scriptures tell us that God is working it all out for our good. It doesn't say that everything is good, does it? It doesn't say, well, everything that happens is good. No, there are things that happen in this world that aren't good. Sin is here in our world. It hurts. Bad things happen. And it might not always be death. It might be something else. Maybe you're having a marriage that's coming apart. Maybe you're having a child that has serious issues. Maybe you have a serious health issue yourself. Maybe you're having a financial hard time. Maybe you're stuck in a job that makes you miserable and you don't know how to get out. All of these things cause us pain. But the scriptures remind us that if 
we love the Lord and we're trying to live according to his purpose for us, then he is working it out for our good. And friends, I think if Andrea was here today, she would tell us that God is working it out. He's going to work it out because he is faithful to us and he does not abandon us in our suffering. Our suffering counts and we can make it count by giving it to him. And um, I think uh, with Andrea's life, she touched so many people. And even in her death, she touched more people for the glory of God. And I pray that through this time where we are sad and we cry and we don't understand and we ask questions and, and we're suffering, that other people can come to know the wonderful story of Andrea's life um, and that they can be influenced for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that if they have not considered about death and they have not prepared for that, then they will get prepared um, and that they will come to know him as Lord and Savior and have that peace that passes all understanding. Friends, I just encourage you today, if you are going through a difficult time, to turn your heart to Jesus, to know that death is a part of life, to know that grief is good, to know that God loves you and cares about you, and that when you give your pain to him, then it's not wasted. Your suffering is not wasted because God is going to use that for good. Friends, I love you, and I have enjoyed all the videos that I have shared with you and all the replies back and forth that I've had with you over the years. And I don't want you to forget um, how much you mean to me. I look forward to next time. Bye-bye.